In this video, we will see how you can use the micro frontend using dynamic model federation. So let's start the video. Hi everyone, this is Subrat and you are watching Fun of Heuristics. So on this channel, you will get to know about the programming languages, the framework and all about the algorithms. So please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon if you haven't yet. If you remember in our last video, we have discussed about remote module and local modules. So the dynamic model federation here is on, on the runtime, you will decide which remote modules you're going to fetch. And to the normal application, it's just like another route to a lazy loader component. That's all. And in this video, we're going to see how we're going to use with NX. And the reason of selecting NX is most of the time, if you are creating a microphone application, it might be going to be a monorepo. And NX Angular is built for that. You can create a mon monorepo. There are a lot of things available. You can go deep onto NX. But here, NX also gives us model federation built in. You can use model federation as well as dynamic model federation with NX. So to start an NX project, it's pretty simple. I will just show the commands in the screen and you can do it yourself because it's pretty simple. I'm not going to show you by coding that. The first thing is you need to install NX. So once you install that, you can go ahead and create an NX workspace. That is NPX create NX workspace and your workspace name. So if you're creating a microfront application, you need two things, one microfront and one base application to run that microfront end. In terms of NX, we call the base application a host. So for that, you can run this command, which is npx nxg at the red nx plus angular colon host and your host name. And to create another application, which we'll use as a micro front end, we'll just run the same command, but with remote flag on it. So it will be like this npm nxg at nx slash angular colon remote. And you need to pass your application name and the host. Our host here each dashboard and you, you can have multiple host which can have multiple micro front end plugged in so then we'll go to our code then i will show you how things works and what i have done different to make things little efficient so if you see here this is the project created by nx so we have created two application one is dashboard and another one is login dashboard is our host and login is our MFEs means our micro front end here. So when you are starting application as a host or as a remote, so what NX is doing is it's adding a module federation config JS to it. So if you open that, ignore it for now, I will explain this later in the video. So for that, what it's doing is, if you remember in our previous video, we've discussed about remote modules. So you will say my application name is dashboard, which is the host application, and I will use remote module as login. So for this application, when login is called, it act as a remote module. And if you go to the remotes.d.ts, here we'll see that we have declared a module as login slash component. But if you start the NS application by default, it will be login slash module. So why I have given component? Because I am using standalone component to expose the component as a micro front end, not the module. So by default, the NX approach is currently as module, but I have updated that to use our standalone component, which is quite famous. So you, you don't need to worry about creating modules, wrapping them components and all, and we all going to see that. So one thing is checked that we have our model federation config here, which is saying that my name and the remote are the login and same login we have exposed it here so that when your router trying to access that, it will not throw you an error. And I will just delete this and I will show you what the error will be. Similarly, if you'll go to the login here in the login, it has created a model federation and instead of remote here, it's exposed because our login is exposing the component to the outer world. So in this, in this scenario to the dashboard. So we are saying our name is login and our component, which will be exposed as slash component. If you remember the component, we have given it in our remote file, remote.ts is component. So if you are giving modules here, you need to give module here as well. 
So this is the routing it specify as a micro front end. So we are saying if you are accessing to the slash components, we'll go to this route, say login app entry component and entry component dot ts, which is this component. It's just a standalone component, a router for, a, for your whole application and that's we don't need because we want to expose the component as a micro front end. We don't want to expose the module. So thanks to our standalone component so i have just deleted everything else and i'm just exporting our component directly linking the component to our model federation file and that's why i like standalone components it makes our life so easier now coming back to our dashboard so in our dashboard we have already told that remote is the login and in the remote.ts we are saying login component will point to login our login micro front end and when we're going to use our micro front end as a router in app route.ts we are saying if the path is login then we are we'll going to load the component means here we are doing lazy loading and we are, we are just pointing to login slash component here we have declared that for our remote modules this will be the path and that's why we are not seeing any error here suppose if i'll just change this to components and we'll you will get an error that this is non recognizable means it is not able to find this module so that's where our remote dot t dot remotes dot d dot ts comes into the picture and we are saying that okay don't worry we'll handle it in the runtime and you just run the application by thinking that this module we have and this is what dynamic federation is and when we'll start our application you will see that we will able to access the remote component here is the micro front end through just a route so we'll start the application so for that we'll write npm npx nx server dashboard so we're starting the dashboard and we are saying that dev remotes as login so if you have multiple micro front end you can pass multiple application name here as well and it will start both of application like dashboard and login and by default dashboard will runs on 4200 and login will runs on 4100 and if you have multiple micro front end it will be accordingly now i'll go to our application here is already started so i've just re refreshed so we have added two url here and it's also added by default by the nx when i hit login you see that login is loaded and we are able to grab entry component js file as well and it's not that big this is fine so this is so low because we have a less content it has only hello login but if you have more content it's just a template file so this is what the power of model federation and how you can use dynamic model federation to load your application if you are going to develop your application as a micro front end way this is the way you should use model federation as much as possible you should use dynamic model federation as much as possible and your application will run very smoothly and handling the projects will also be very smooth now you ask me subrat we heard that module federation supports package sharing like if you have a similar package suppose you have angular 16 in both of your project if a version of your application is same and this will be remain same for angular react view whichever framework you have if it is running on webpack 5 and plus you have model federation you have dynamic model federation so to share your libraries to share your application what you can do is what I have asked you to ignore in the starting of the video is this base config. So what I have done is I have added a model federation config which you can also find this on the documentation of NX. We have also added this one like Angular, Redux, NX, NGRX, anything you want to use, you want to share between your micro front end and your base app, then you should do that else your bundle size will be higher if you if you see here we have very few line of javascript code because because i have already shared angular with my host as well as the mfes means micro front end so here what we are saying is these are my core libraries and you are saying shared inside share we are checking if the library which is coming inside if it is the core library then you are saying that singleton is true and we are saying version should be strict and it should lo load only once. That's why 
singleton and if it is not we are returning false we'll add this export to our both of our model federation config in our mfe which is login in this scenario we are spreading the config by calling it here and similarly in our base means in our host app we are doing the same thing by spreading our base config so that's what a micro front end using model federation and that's what a micro front end using dynamic model federation and this is how you can use multiple micro front end and use it inside your host app so that your managing of the project will be smoother because you have divided your different services to different micro front end now different teams can work on them and they can release it independently and when your base app will run it will just goes and get that data on the runtime and render it on the user's browser so please go ahead and use micro front end with nx but if you don't want to use nx for some reason then please let me know in the comment section below so that i will try to make an another video how you can use dynamic model federation without using nx so that's all for today we're going to meet in the next video till that stay happy bye bye